I hate that I have to recommend this to you guys because I hated taking this class in medical school. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Michael. I'm a second year medical student. And in today's video, I just wanna to talk to you guys about the required classes that you need to take in order to go to medical school. But I'm also going to be mentioning some classes that I highly recommend that you guys take as well before going to medical school. These classes are not required, but I think they are definitely going to help you guys do much better and be much better prepared going into medical school. So definitely if you guys take anything from this video, it's take at least a few of those non-required classes um, because like I said, they are going to show up quite a bit in medical school and it's only gonna help you guys be that much more prepared and that much more ahead of some of your other colleagues. So if you guys don't already know the required classes in order to apply to medical school, first off, you need to take your general education. So that's generally your first two years of college. Those classes are gonna consist of English, history, math, um, and so on. But the classes that are known as pre-med, um, at some universities, that's gonna actually be a major, but at the majority of colleges, pre-med is just a way of saying you need to take these classes in order to apply to medical school. It's generally not a major, so you're gonna need to major in something else, and I highly recommend majoring in something you're interested in learning about. It does not need to be science-related, and if it's not science related, you actually stand out a little bit more in the application cycle. So that is also something to consider if you guys are not super huge on learning chemistry or biology or like neuroscience or anything like that. You can certainly major in a language like I did. I majored in Spanish and I was still able to get into medical school. And it was actually something that got brought up a lot during my interviews. So that's definitely something to consider. If you guys are interested in something other than science, then consider majoring in something else. But the classic pre-med classes are one year of biology. That's usually general biology one and general biology two, making up an entire year of biology. Then you're gonna also need to take general chemistry one and two, which is a year of chemistry. Then you're gonna have to take organic chemistry one and two, which is another year of organic chemistry. And then for the majority of medical schools, they're gonna require one semester of biochemistry. Now, not every medical school requires biochemistry, but I would say the good majority is gonna require one semester of biochemistry. Now, the reason I would highly recommend taking biochemistry is because the majority of the MCAT is biochemistry. And so you are definitely going to need to know those different biochemical pathways for the MCAT you're also going to need to know that stuff for medical school. So glycolysis, um, gluconeogenesis, the Krebs cycle, lipolysis, all of those different metabolic pathways will show up again in medical school and on your medical school board exams. So it's not only on your MCAT, but you're going to see it for the next few years. Now, in addition to those courses, you also need to take up to statistics in math. And so if you've taken calculus or something like that, then obviously you've surpassed statistics, so you are good there. But if you've only taken like your most basic math classes, then you need to take at least up to statistics. Which brings me to another point. Sometimes if you major in chemistry or biology, the major itself is gonna require you to take calculus. So at least for me, I was never great at math and I certainly didn't wanna take calculus. And so that was one of the deciding factors on choosing to not major in the sciences because I didn't want to take calculus and that is a requirement for most science majors. So definitely keep that in mind if you're not great at math. Another important point to mention is your math is actually calculated into your science GPA. So that can definitely work in your favor or out of your favor because if you're great at math and you take multiple math classes, that's gonna help offset any poor grades that you get in biology or chemistry or physics. But if you're not great at math, then maybe don't major in something that's gonna require you to take more math classes like a biology or chemistry major. Now the last classes that are required for your pre-med curriculum is physics one and physics two, which again is an entire year of physics. Now keep in mind, you can take all of these classes kind of intermixed. So you're not actually gonna be in your undergraduate years for five or six years. You can take a lot of these classes 
in the same year. The only exception to that are your chemistry classes. So definitely start chemistry as soon as you can because you cannot take organic chemistry until you've completed general chemistry. And I wouldn't recommend taking biochemistry until you've taken at least one semester of organic chemistry. Um, so definitely keep that stuff in mind. Physics, you can take it whenever you want. It could be your first class in college if you want. I wouldn't recommend that because physics is pretty tough. And one little piece of advice regarding physics, and this is going to make physics probably a whole lot easier if you're not great at math and physics because who's actually good at physics and why do we even need to take it for medical school anyways? I don't know. Anyways, if you're not great at physics or you don't think you're going to be great at physics, look at taking it during your summer semester. A lot of schools will offer both physics one and two in the summer semester as an accelerated course. That's what I did and it's generally a lot easier and it's awesome to just get it out of the way. Yes, you're going to have to sacrifice some of your summer to study and do well in physics, but honestly guys, it's a whole lot better than wasting an entire year trying to understand physics when honestly guys, you don't really need it. The only reason you need to take it is because it shows up on the MCAT. So take it for what it's worth. Take it in the summer if you guys want to. Um, like I said, I did it and it was a lot easier. And generally there's always a much bigger curve in physics. So don't worry about failing literally all of your exams. There's going to be a huge curve most likely at the end of the semester and you guys should be just fine. All right, so moving on to the non-required classes to apply to medical school. These are classes that you are going to take in medical school or at least see at some point in medical school and they're going to show up on your med school board exam. So these are topics that I highly recommend taking if you guys have the time and the money to take them as an undergraduate student because it's gonna put you guys so much further ahead than the rest of your classmates. So the first classes that I recommend taking are anatomy and physiology. If you guys didn't know, anatomy and physiology are not required to go to medical school. I don't know why they aren't required, but I highly recommend taking them because your first year of medical school is all anatomy and physiology. You are literally gonna learn every single bone, every single muscle, you're going to learn a lot of the nerves. You're going to learn the blood vessels, at least the major ones. Um, you're going to be learning so much about anatomy and physiology and how everything in the body works together that I think if you can take it as an undergraduate student, it's going to help you guys do so much better in medical school. I can't imagine not taking anatomy and physiology before med school. I took it during my master's program. I didn't actually take it during undergrad, but I did get exposed to it during my special master's program. And I am so glad I did because there is a lot to learn in anatomy and physiology as a first year medical student. Now the next class that I highly recommend taking, it's very similar to anatomy. It's kind of like micro anatomy and it's called histology. So histology is basically everything you see under a microscope. It's all of like that stratified squamous cells, all of the different cells and the different types of cells that your body tissues are made up of. That is what histology is. And it comes up a lot as a first year medical student. And it's starting to come up a lot more on step one and complex one for your board exam. So I've been hearing from a lot of professors and a lot of medical students that just took boards that are saying there's a lot more histology on the board exams. Now, I don't think you need to know what histology is and make a diagnosis. I think the histology is there to supplement the question stem and if you can know that histology, it's ultimately going to make the question a lot easier to answer. The next class that I recommend taking, and I hate that I have to recommend this to you guys because I hated taking this class in medical school, and it's embryology. Yes, embryology comes up in every systems course you're going to take as a first year medical student. It is very difficult, guys. These are things that you guys haven't learned um, they're weird names. They're just, it's just weird. So if you guys can get early exposure to it as an undergraduate student, it's going to make it a whole lot easier in medical school. And just a, I guess a quick side note, quick story. I took embryology as part of my special master's program as well. 
It was probably the hardest course that I took during that program. I got a, I got a B in it. And here's the thing, guys. When I went to my first year of med school, I thought like this was going to be enough. Like I had been exposed to embryology. I kind of knew what we were looking at, what we were talking about. But I guarantee, guys, I probably missed 90% of the embryology questions on literally all my med school exams. So it didn't even matter that I took it the semester before starting medical school. It's a very difficult course. It's a lot of memorizing like different genes um, and different cell types and just pathways on how the body develops. So I don't blame you guys if you don't do really well in it. But if you guys can at least get some sort of exposure, whether it's watching YouTube videos on it or whatever, um, I think it's going to be really helpful for you guys in the end. So guys, I know this is a lot to take in, and I know a lot of these classes are really difficult. I know I struggled in undergrad with a lot of these classes, and so that's kind of why I partnered up with the MD Journey, which is another YouTube channel run by an internal medicine physician. Um, he has come up with a bunch of different courses to help pre-meds and medical students learn how to study better and handle these pretty difficult classes. So if you guys are interested in purchasing any of his courses, you guys can find the links down below. Um, and then if you guys use my discount code, you'll get 10% off any of the courses that you guys purchase. Um, so I think it's a really good resource, especially if you're struggling with, especially if you guys are about to go into medical school or if you're in your first year or first semester of medical school, it might be a little bit daunting with all of the information that's coming at you. And you're probably wondering like, how am I supposed to learn all this material? And that's why these courses that he's made are gonna be extremely beneficial for you. So if you guys want to at least check this stuff out, I know he's got a bunch of free stuff as well. The links will be down in the description below. If you guys need any help with MCAT prep, as you guys know, I've been partnered with a company called MCAT Self Prep. You guys will also get 10% off, but a lot of the content is free. He has a huge biochemistry section. So if you're in biochemistry right now, use the free biochem stuff. And if you guys want to purchase anything, my discount code will be down below as well. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook. My Facebook page is called Med School Mentor. I offer pre-med advising. Um, come talk to me. We'll figure this out together. And I hope to see you guys very soon in my next video.